Welcome to another edition of Leap Forward with Reese and Schnell. I'm your host, Bo Durachik, and today we have with us the Hammer, Todd Vogel. How's it going, Todd? Excellent. How are Great. you? Excellent. Today we're going to talk about forage harvesters and the hand forage in general. And we have Todd with us today to talk about his experience, and uh, I'll let Todd tell you a little bit about himself and how long he's been with the company. I'm Todd Vogel, specializing in our hand forage equipment. Been with Research Snow for 16 years, and been very involved with all of our dairies and our in forge products since that time frame and so how did you get started it really kind of started getting into the gps equipment and the precision farming part of it and working with our harvest lab which is a near infrared sensor that that particular piece of equipment it takes 60 pictures a second measuring the reflection of the crop so spending a lot of time with that working with our um, forge harvester owners and then from there, just kind of working with them more on more on cost of operation, keeping our wear items, um, you know, replaced as needed, and really reassuring that we're putting up the highest feed quality possible. That's excellent. And if any of you know Todd, he's never wrong. So everything we hear today is perfectly factual, right, Todd? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's dig into it. So let's talk a little bit about the choppers themselves. Let's talk about the, like, the history and how we've gotten to the 9000 series. Yeah, so it was actually in um, 2022 was John Deere's 50th anniversary of making the Forge Harvester. So lots of progress through that time frame to basically come to where we are with this 9900 behind us today. So lots of years of experience of putting up high quality feed, quali feed um, quality and then also building a very reliable machine at the same time with minimal cost of ownership. Let's talk about cost of ownership for a second. What all goes into what uh, somebody's looking for for a cost per hour or something like that when they're trying to purchase one? We're going to start looking at, you know, basically what the machine was purchased for, what it's worth at the end of that life, how much money is going into it during the lifetime that the customer owns it as far as maintenance and wear and tear and uh, replacing those wear items. And then we can break that down by basically cost per hour or, you know, really break it down to, you know, the tonnage. Look at this pile of feed behind us. So how much, how many tons of feed did that machine put up in its lifetime for that customer? And we can break that down to cost per ton. Sure. Based on that, so, you know, for some of the folks that don't always know what the forage harvest is about, what kind of crops can we use these for? It's mostly in our area here going to be alfalfa and corn silage as, um, we're getting more diversity in some of the other crops. We got a lot of rye that's being planted as cover crops, and then that can be harvested for feed as well, along with triticale and sorghum. Um, some oats and peas done with new seeding alfalfa. So we do got some diverse crops that come into our area, but with the bulk of it being corn silage and alfalfa. But some of the other crops, are there any other attachments that we can use to harvest? We do have um, direct cut heads available, so it's basically got a disc bind cutter bar on a head with an auger, and then we can direct cut that rye, triticale, and sorghum off. We've seen field. some of those crops get pretty gnarly in there, and those heads work pretty good, don't they? Yep, they're going to suck it up just like a vacuum, and then um, really help us get good cut quality with it too, because we don't have to cut it and rake it or merge it and it feeds very uniform. So with that, we get um, very uniform cut quality. Let's talk about the cut quality for a second. What about the chopper makes it do such a nice job of the feed quality we see on the file behind us? It's gonna be basically with our header speed, feed roll speed, and then coming into the cutter head, our knives and our shear bar. You know, how well are we keeping up on sharpening knives and setting the shear bar, and then are we replacing those items as needed when they are? And if we do, you can see here, as we're going through this corn silage sample, as we keep everything um, maintained well and sharpened throughout the day, it's this particle size right here. This is truly what we're looking for is, how consistent can we make this feed all day long throughout the whole season? And you know, sometimes maybe it's for 5,000 tons of feed and all the way up to 70,000 tons of feed for that given season or crop. And then as we go through this, and you start looking at these pieces, we're looking for that consistency. How does this measure out? It's probably a little hard for you to see there, but 
we're really looking for uniform length, and that's what cows need is they need a uniform dye coming in, that uniform ration of corn silage, keeping that consistent with the cut quality and the kernel processing of it, and then with the cut quality of haylage along with the other ingredients that the farm might be adding into the ration. And the uniformity of this is what makes these cows happy and keeps them producing high and consistent throughout the year. And we talk about that consistency. You know, we might be putting up, um, you know, like we said, anywhere from 5,000 ton to 70,000 ton, you know, with one machine throughout the year where, you know, they still might have over 100,000 ton of feed on the um, pile underneath that plastic and those tires. We need that feed cut perfect so that we can feed it all year long. You know, especially corn silage. We're going to cut that corn silage. It could take anywhere from two to four weeks. This year with the way things are spread out, maybe it's over a two-month period. We're a little unsure, you know, until we get into the crop. But we're putting up a whole year's worth of corn silage, typically within a two to four week period. We got to assure we're putting up high quality feed. And the farmers have to live with that the whole year, right? The cows got to eat that all year long. So the work that we yep. do in that two to four week period is so important to make sure that it's done per- perfectly for the cows. Yep, definitely. Excellent. Let's jump back into the hay- haylage there for a second. On the hay head, you can see behind us, um, there's an option on there that helps feed it in really smoothly. How does that work? Yeah, again, as we talk about the head and the feed rolls working together to feed uniformly to give us consistent feed, it all starts up front. Um, With our heads, when we set our length of cut, that's going to set the feed roll speed and the um, header or auger speed on the hay head. And every hay crop's different. Wind roll sizes are different from field to field, from crop to crop. We need that thing dialed in and fine-tuned. You're going to be driving different speeds. The pickup on the hay head is going to match our ground speed. So the faster you go, the faster the pickup goes. We got big windrows and we got to go a little slower. The pickup's going to go slower and spoon feed that thing, which just keeps our feeding very smooth all day long and all season long for the various crops, reassuring that highest quality of consistency in our cut quality out there. What in the situation of, like, let's say, straw, where we've got these big rows and it's been raked into it, um, can you run that independently? Yeah, at that point, if we need to, and some of those other crops where you run into some, you know, tricky situations of maybe it's a huge row and really dry or vice versa, we can go in there and then fine-tune that auger speed or the pickup speed independent of each other, you know, to fine-tune those in those harder conditions like that. Sure. Um, normal alfalfa conditions, we're really never going to touch those speeds at all. But when we get into those um, other alternative forages and different crops out there, it gives us that option to dial it in for those conditions. Okay. Let's jump back into corn silage for a second. What about the, the whole process of ensiling that corn silage? What is that, the key component in that in the forage harvest that does that? Peace. It's going to be um, with our uniform cut quality again. We're going to have the inoculant applicator on there. If the customer is going to be using inoculant, you know, we can get that put onto the crop and spread evenly throughout it. So then as they're packing that pile, they're um, getting that all spread and uniform throughout. And then also making sure we've got enough machines on the pile packing to to compensate for the capacity of the machine coming in. So we've got, you know, different range um, size machines were anywhere from 500 horse up to 970 horse and then sometimes you might have several of these 970 horse machines bringing feed into um, one place well if that's happening we got to make sure we've got enough tractors on that pile packing the feed so one of the most crucial steps in reassuring that high quality feed is we're going to start with the machine I'm getting the consistency of that cut quality and processing the kernels up front. But then we also need to make sure that we're storing that feed properly and packing it adequately, which a lot of times with those big forage harvesters, you might need two or three pack tractors to keep up to it and reassuring that we're getting the density of the pile packed the way we need to so that you don't get any spoilage on that thing. You know, you can see on these piles that when it's done adequately, 
there's nothing there. And a lot learned over the years. It, you know, I can remember over 20 years ago, you know, working on a farm and part of working with the uh, bunk was kind of shoveling the mold off of that thing and, you know, getting that out of the way so that we could get to the good feed. And things have come so far in our seed genetics, you know, to produce the quality plant that's needed, understanding how to maintain and fine tune the forage harvester to put up that high quality feed, but then also storing it to where we've got very minimal spoilage and we got high quality feed that we're feeding all year long. Excellent. Well, we know a few people that can help you out if you need an extra tractor on the pile, don't we? Possibly. <laughs> yes, we do. Excellent. Excellent. So talking about that, so we're harvesting, things are going good, the trucks are coming, the tractors are packing, um, something happens to the forage harvester. What happens at Reese Now, A lot of hands on deck to um, react as quickly as possible, you know, figure out is there any parts we need, um, what technicians available, and we're going to work together as a team to get that machine up and going as fast as possible. Um, we know all equipment is going to have a breakdown here or there, and it's a matter of how that service department can react and take care of the customer. And that's a major part of what our business is, is, you know, working with these guys to reassure minimal downtime and keep them up and going. Um, it's having service loaners on hand if needed and, you know, having um, basically several machines ready to go at all times so that we can reassure that in our territory of northeast Wisconsin and central Wisconsin that we're going to keep these dairies and custom operators going to put up that high quality feed that our dairy farmers are going to be feeding all year long. That's excellent. That sense of urgency is very important for what we do at Reese Church now. Yep. So, to kind of some final thoughts, um, take us back through front to back, um, beginning at the beginning of haylage all the way through corn silage. Give us a, a follow through the whole thing. Well, basically, you know, as we go into haylage, we're always going to make sure our hay heads are ready to go, pick up teeth are good, everything's um, dialed in there. We're going to have our grass knives installed, make sure we got a good uh, set of grass knives set for the year. Shear bar, you know, checking over that shear bar, does it need to be flipped? Can we get another season through it? You know, working with your service team to make sure that, you know, any of those wear items are dialed in. And then um, from there, you know, working with our mapping systems as well, having your setup data loaded into the machine. That all helps. We can have a variety locator. So as we switch field to field, the display is going to automatically pop up the variety that was displayed in there. And then we're collecting that good quality data as well of showing what each field and each variety and different fertilizer applications have produced, you know, for that plant out in the field. So then you can get a really good idea of what we got coming in for the year for the crop and be able to see... You know, what management practices work the best, what varieties work the best, and how can we make decisions of using that data for the following year. Excellent. I thank you very much for your wisdom today, Todd. The Hammer from Reese Schnell. Uh, that wrap puts a wrap on our, our uh, podcast for today. Uh, be sure to like us on Facebook and YouTube. Check us out on Snapchat. Look at the cool videos be coming for this fall. The adrenaline's already pumping, so look, check out the TikToks when they come. We're ready for corn silage. Here we go. Yep, thank you very much. We're your John Deere dealer coming through for you. Priesterer and Schnell.